So magandang araw na naman sa ating lahat and for today's video lesson, we will talk about the properties of parallelogram. At the end of this video lesson, you will be able to determine the conditions that makes a quadrilateral a parallelogram. Also, use the properties to find the measures of angles, sides, and other quantities involving parallelogram. First, let's define parallelogram. It is a quadrilateral whose opposite sides are parallel. So we have a given figure here, and a parallelogram has four vertices, four angles, and has four sides. Four vertices, ito yung edges natin, and then four angles, interior angles, and then four sides. So let's move on on our first property. The opposite sides are parallel. So kung makikita natin, meron tayong given dito na parallelogram A, B, C, D. And opposite sides are parallel. Kung makikita natin, meron tayong markings dito which are parallel. A, B is parallel to B, C. And A, B is parallel to B, C. So kanilang opposite sides. So they are parallel. Kapag parallel ang pinag-uusapan natin, ito yung dalawang lines na hinding-hindi mag intersect sa isa't isa. Next property is the opposite sides are congruent. So same yung given natin na parallelogram, parallelogram A, B, C, D. So opposite sides are congruent. So ibig sabihin, yung parallel sides are congruent. So we have side AB is congruent to side DC. Side AB is congruent to side BC. Say for example, AB is 10. BC is also equal to 10. Kasi congruent sila or they are equal. Same lang sa ating AD and BC. If AD is 5, BC is also 5. Next property, the opposite angles are congruent. On our given figure, we have again parallelogram ABCD. The opposite angles Angle A is congruent to angle C. Angle B is congruent to angle D. Say for example, angle A is 100. Angle C is also 100. If angle B is 80, angle D is also 80 because opposite angles are congruent. Next property, the consecutive angles are Supplementary. Kapag consecutive angles ang pinag-uusapan natin, ito yung angles na magkasunod or magkatabi. And kapag supplementary, ito yung dalawang angles na kapag in natin sila, ang makukuha natin is 180 degrees. So dito sa ating given na parallelogram, again, A, B, C, D. So yung dalawang magkatabing angle kapag in is 180. Okay, for example, angle A and angle B magkatabi yan. So kapag in yung dalawa na yan, is equal to 180. Also, angle B and angle C, 180 kapag in -add. Angle C and angle D, 180 din kapag in -add. And lastly, angle D and angle A, kapag in yung dalawa na consecutive angles, ang makukuha natin is 180. Next property is the diagonals bisect each other. So as we can see, meron tayong dalawang given na diagonals. We have diagonal AC and diagonal BD. And their intersection is point Diagonal AC bisect BD. Diagonal AC bisect BD, sabihin, hinahati daw ni AC si BD. Which means, BE is congruent to BE. So say for example, BE is 10. DE is also 10. Or say for example, yung buong diagonal is 30. Ibig sabihin, hahati lang natin siya sa dalawa. So si DE nun is 15, and then BE is also Diagonal BD bisect AC. This time naman, si AC naman yung nahate ni BD. So, AE is congruent to CE. So, say for example, AE is 5, CE is also 5. Say for example, AC is 50, nahatiin lang natin yan, AE is 25, CE is also 25. Last property, each diagonal bisects the parallelogram into two congruent Triangle. So as we can see dito, meron tayong diagonal BD. So yung diagonal BD na yan is hinahati niya yung ating parallelogram sa dalawang congruent na triangles. So eto, 
Itong angle na to, or angle A, D, B, is congruent to angle C, B, D. So, alternate angles sila. Next, angle C, D, B, is congruent to angle A, B, D. Ito yan, yung red na angle. Again, yung black na angles, congruent. Yung red na angles are congruent because they are alternate angles. Kung gagamitin naman natin yung isa pang diagonal, diagonal AC, same lang din yung ibig sabihin niya. Which means, triangle ABD, itong triangle na nasa taas, is congruent to triangle CBD. So again, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. Let's have our examples. Solve for X. So meron tayong given dito na parallelogram ABCD. And then yung given natin, angle A is 80 degrees. And angle B is 11x minus 11. So, titignan natin kung saan ang property nagpo-fall yung ating given. So, as we can see, angle A and angle B are consecutive angles. Which means, angle A or the measurement of angle A plus the measurement of angle B is equal to 180. Next, 80 plus 11x minus 10 is equal to 180. Yung red natin is siya si angle A and then yung blue is siya yung ating angle B. Next step is we will equate the given. So, 80 plus 11x minus 10 is equal to 180. Next, combine like terms tayo. 80 minus 10 is 70. Bring down 11x plus 70 is equal to bring down 180. Next, pagsasamahin natin yung ating constant which are 70 and 80. Tatranspose natin si 70 sa kabila, it will become negative. So, it will become 11x is equal to 180 minus 70. 180 minus 70 is 110. And then, dahil meron pang kasamang 11 si x, we will divide both sides by 11. So, 11x over 11. Sa kabila din is 110 over 11. So, our final answer is x is equal to 10. 110 over 11 is 10. Next example. So, again, solve for x. Yung given natin is parallelogram ABCD pa rin. And yung given natin is side AD and side BC. So, saan property ba nag-fall yung ating given. So as we can see, opposite sides yung dalawa which means they are congruent. Side AD is congruent to side BC based sa ating given na parallelogram. Next is 2x plus 15, ito yung ating AD. And then x plus 15, ito yung ating BC. And then papalitan lang natin ng equal sign yung ating congruent sign. Next is same process. Equate lang natin. Combine like terms. Si x is naging negative x kasi Positive siya kanina, transpose tayo, change ng sign. Ganun din kay 15, positive 15 naging negative 15. So, 2x minus x is equal to 20 minus 15. If we are going to equate this one, x is equal to 5. Next example, solve for x again. So, same yung ating given na parallelogram, but this time we have two diagonals. So, diagonal AC and diagonal BD. And yung kanilang intersection is si point E. So, our given is AE is equal to 19. So, AE is equal to 19. And then, our AC, yung buong diagonal, is equal to 5x minus 7. If we are going to analyze yung ating given, is diagonals ang involved. So, kung titignan natin, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Which means, dito, AE is congruent to CE. And para mahanap yung ating AC, is we need to add AE and CE. AE plus CE is equal to AC. Yung buong diagonal, yung kalahate at yung kalahati nung diagonal. So, ang mangyayari is yung AE plus CE is 38. Bakit? AE natin is 19. AE and CE are congruent. So, 19 times 2 or 19 plus 19 is 38. And then, yung AC natin is given siya 5x minus 7. Next is same process lang tayo. Equate natin yung given. So, yung si negative 7 is transpose natin. Magiging positive. And then, bring down si 5x at saka si 38. Next, 38 plus 7 is 45. Is equal to 5x. Dahil may kasama pang 5 si x, so divide natin both sides ng 5. So, 45 over 5 is equal to 5x over 5. And if you are going to simplify this one, cancel na to, x na lang, and then 45 over 5 is 9. Therefore, our final answer is x is equal to 9. Last example, find the measurement of angle ABC. 
this time, yung measurement mismo ng angle yung hinahanap natin. So, kung mapapansin natin, para mahanap yung ating measurement of angle ABC, is kailangan natin i-add yung angle na to, or the measurement of angle ADB, and yung angle na to, or the measurement of angle CDB, para mahanap yung angle ABC. And saan nga ba nagpo-fall yung ating given dito? Kung mapapansin natin is meron tayong dalawang given na angle dito. This is ating isang triangle which is yung triangle BCD. So we have 2x minus 7 and 125 degrees. And if we are going to analyze this one is si 2x plus 14 pwede natin gamitin kasi congruent siya sa angle na to. Or angle ADB is congruent to angle CBD. Dahil nga they are alternate angles. So, the measurement of our triangle BCD, itong triangle na nasa baba, is 180. Any triangle naman, ang kanyang interior angle is 180 degrees. Next is, the measurement of our triangle BCD is equal to the measurement of angle B. Yung triangle na nasa baba, angle B, angle C, and angle D. I-add natin yung tatlo na yan. And, the measurement of angle BCD is 180. B is 2x plus 14. Ginamit natin yung angle na given dito then angle C is 125 and then angle D is 2x minus 7 same process tayo equate lang natin yung nakuha natin kanina which is 180 is equal to 2x plus 14 plus 125 plus 2x minus 7 so combine like terms lang tayo pinagsama natin si 2x and 2x linear term and then yung constant natin 14, 125 and negative 7 and then bring down 180 kung equate natin yan 2x plus 2x is 4x and then 14 plus 125 minus 7 is 132. And then bring down 180. Transpose natin si 132 para makasama niya si 180 kasi pareho silang constant. So it will become negative. Change sign lang kasi positive kanina. And then bring down 4x. 180 minus 132 is 48. And then dahil may kasama pang 4 si x, we will divide both sides by 4. So 48 over 4 is equal to 4x over 4. And then cancel na yon. Magiging x na lang. And then if we are going to simplify, 48 over 4 is 12. So the value of our x is equal to 12. Pero hindi pa tayo dito nagtatapos. Kasi kailangan nating mahanap yung measurement mismo. So what are we going to do is substitution using our x is equal to 12. So una muna is 2x plus 14. And then yung pangalawa is 2x minus 7. And para mahanap yung the measurement of angle ADC is i-add natin yung dalawang measurement na nakuha natin. So using the measurement of angle ADB, so 2x plus 14, substitute lang natin si x, magiging 12. So 2 times 12 plus 14 is 38. Next is the measurement of angle CDB is equal to 2x minus 7. Same process, substitution. The measurement of angle CDB is 17. The last step is to find our unknown which is the measurement of angle ADC is we need to add yung kaninang nakuha natin which are 48 and 17. Yun yung ating measurement of angle ADB gamit dito and the measurement of angle CDB gamit yung 2x minus 7. And our final answer is the measurement of angle ADC is equal to 55 degrees. That ends our video lesson for today. Hopefully is marami kayo natutunan. Maraming maraming salamat. Keep safe and God bless.